Handling turtles and tortoises vary with size and shell type. The handling procedure should ensure the safety of the handler and the animal being rescued. It should cause minimal stress in the animal and not aggravate any existing injuries. Most small to medium sized chelonians are easily held by the shell with both hands on the side of the body by keeping both hands in between the fore and hind limb of the animal. Larger hard shell turtles or tortoises can be grasped with both hands, one on each side of the shell. Another way for holding large hard shell turtle is to hold the animal by the carapace behind the head and above the tail while keeping the top shell and neck directed away from the handler. Soft shell turtles are most safely handled by grasping them firmly at the rear of the top shell with both hands and sometimes at the front and rear. Care should be taken to avoid handling turtles in such a way where the turtle faces upside down with the plastron on top. This can create difficulty in respiration because of the absence of a true diaphragm that leads to pressure on the internal organs over the lungs of the turtles which is attached to the carapace. Other points to be remembered while handling turtles are If not adequately restrained, large turtles can give firm bites as their beaks are strong and sharp. It is suggested not to reach across until restrained adequately and the head should face in a direction that is away from the handler when restrained. The nails of some chelonians are very sharp and can inflict painful scratches. Chelonians may urinate while handling or while stressed or agitated which can make it dehydrated. While handling, protective covers should be applied such as gloves, for safety from scratch and bite and as well as from diseases. Smaller crocodiles which are less than one meter in length can be captured by hand, tongs, nooses, dip nets, cast nets and chain nets. Large individuals are captured using nooses, traps and nets. Once captured or noosed, the animal must be blindfolded from a distance by putting some cloths or gunny sack ensuring that the nostrils are open. All transportation should meet standard guidelines as per International Air Transport Association and CITES regulations. All crates should also maintain specific guidelines and be well ventilated, secured and safe. There should not be any projections, bolts, etc. Special precaution like padding is preferred for chelonians and crocodilians. Transportation should be carried out during the cooler part of the day. Precautions should be taken to avoid overheating and stress to the animals. On entry to a rescue center, triage should be followed up. Species identification should be done followed by body condition evaluation based on length weight relationship and extent of injury. Based on extent of injury and biological sample assessment, veterinary intervention should be provided as first aid, fluid therapy, wound management and surgical management by a trained veterinarian. Once health assessment is done, the animals should be introduced, kept for quarantine period where isolation is done species-wise for specific terms, for specific needs in terms of food, cover and depth of water, regular veterinary intervention for the injured animal, along with husbandry techniques, hygiene, nutrition, enrichment should be considered during quarantine and for hatchlings. Health assessment should be done at regular intervals. Necropsy should also be followed for dead carcasses for prevention of any further mortality of the animals. For growth pattern, Regular morphometric measurements along with weight should be recorded for body mass index and providing food based on that. Species specific food should be provided based on daily energy requirement, season and the food habit type such as carnivore, herbivore and omnivore.
10 to 15 percent of the body weight is suggested. Enrichment of enclosures is very important. Furnitures inside the enclosures, including logs for basking, aquatic macrophytes for cover and food, water circulation units, hides, shades, and haul out mats to avoid injuries to the plastron of the animals from rough surfaces while hauling out, should be provided to the animals for better opportunities to exhibit natural behavior and reduce the stress of captivity. The enclosures should be covered from all four sides with green shade drapes to minimize interaction with humans, whereas the top should remain exposed to natural sunlight for basking. For sanitation and hygiene of the enclosure, 20% of the total water volume should be changed every three days. Ponds should be scrubbed and cleaned once a month and the premises should be cleaned regularly. During winters, enclosures should be insulated with thick plastic sheet and water is heated using artificial heated to maintain ambient temperature around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. During summers, thatched shades and shrubs limit direct sunlight but still provide sufficient basking sites and roofs of enclosures should be covered partially with thatch to prevent overheating of water. Rescued eggs of chelonians and crocodilians should be handled very carefully as their eggs may be infertile if mishandled. As reptile eggs don't have shalaza, turning eggs can make them infertile. Care should be taken to handle the eggs maintaining the same position and direction. In situ incubation can be done by protecting the nesting area by means of barrier from feral dogs pigs or humans. Ex situ incubation can be done away from the site and as an in-house system where eggs are incubated inside wooden boxes filled with river sand and natal sand by maintaining humidity and temperature and two to three tier system where eggs are kept in different temperature gradients maintaining three centimeters of sand between each layer of eggs while in semi-natural system burrows are made and 20 to 25 eggs are kept in each burrows with the same depth and same order of egg arrangement found during the rescue while in semi-natural system burrows are made and 20 to 25 eggs are kept in each burrow with the same depth and same order of egg arrangement found during the rescue. Once permission is granted by competent authority for release, suitable strategies should be developed. Release strategies involve pre-release health assessment. The fit and disease-free individuals should get a health certificate from a veterinarian. Other than that, animals are marked by various marking methods such as internal implants and visual markers for the post-release monitoring. Assessment of release site should be done for habitat suitability and history of presence of the same species or related species of the animal. All data should be maintained regarding feeding, growth, marking, habitat and health assessment. Fit animals are released back into the natural system Post-release monitoring is essential for successful rescue, rehabilitation,